Namaste, angels. This is the daily reading for Friday, November 2nd, All Souls Day. Um, this goes through into and through the weekend, of course. We're going to begin with the year 1875 when Verne Cameroon, a person, I'm, I'm going to presume male since this is a patriarchal society and has been for a long time. He reaches Benguela in Angola from Africa's east coast. It's the first European to cross Equator Africa. So I guess to go from the east side to the west side. 1917 or 99, Balfour Declaration. It proclaims support for a Jewish state in Palestine. 1930, coronation of Ras Tafari Makonin as Haile Selassie. So his name was Ras Tafari Makonin, but when he got crowned emperor, is according to this, when he took on the name Haile Selassie the first. He is the 225th, or another nine, emperor of Ethiopian Solomonic dynasty, as in King Solomon. Uh, 1930, of course, 13 of four or 11, 11 as well. 1949, Netherland recognizes Indonesia as a sovereign state. 1966, another 67 or 13 or 4, 11, 11, the Cuban Adjustment Act comes into force and it allows 123,000 Cubans an opportunity to apply for permanent residence in the United States. <laughs> that wouldn't go over right now. You guys have been watching what's going on. Did you know cheerleading begins in the United States as Johnny Campbell leads the crowd cheering on the football team at the University of Minnesota. This happened on November 2nd in the year 1898, the first male cheerleader, I guess. Famous birthdays, Marie Antoinette, James Knox Polk, Warren G. Harding, Aga Khan III, Ken Rosewall, and Dave Stockton. Would you believe the Great Emu War begins on this day, November 2nd in the year 1932? Australian soldiers armed with Lewis guns sought to cull the emu population over crop dis destruction in Campion District, Western Australia. So there were so many emu that it was becoming overrun. That's what goes on in Hawaii. That's why they eat so much pork. There's wild boar everywhere. And if they don't you know, control the population, or at least it's believed and said that if they don't control the population, they will be overrun by the wild boar. Famous birthdays, 1887, baseball legend Connie Mack, 24, weds Margaret Hogan, 1896. Inzari Imam, or Aga Khan III, 19, weds his first cousin, Shahzadi Begum in Pune, India. 2005, the, the um, racist woman that got mad and deleted herself from my page this week, her name was, um, was Begum. <laughs> oh, goodness, that's funny. 2005, Irish TV and radio presenter Sile Seos, 26, weds Glenn Mulcahy at St. Brennan's Church in County Offaly. 2009, Sex and the City actor Ron Livingston, 41, weds actress Rosemary DeWitt, 34, in San Francisco. And 2012, BMX icon TJ Lavin weds longtime fiance Roxanne Ciordia, 32, in Las Vegas. Also famous divorces, rocker Rod Stewart, 58. Divorces model Rachel Hunter, 33, due to irreconcilable differences, 58, 13, or 4, 11, 11. 33, of course, master number 33, representative of the ascended masters as well. And creation, the creator, abundance. Famous deaths. George Bernard Shaw, Ingo Din Diem, Willie Sutton, Tony Stone, and Zayed bin Sultan al Nayan. Zayed bin Sultan Al Nayan was Amaric, 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 oh goodness, Arabic and Emirati, as in the Emirates. 
He was also president of the United Arab Emirates, principal driving force behind the formation of the United Arab Emirates when the states decided to federate as the United Arab Emirates in 1971. He became president of its Supreme Council, a position he held for over 30 years. He was born on May 6th, which is 11 in the year 1918. And... The birthplace was Al Ain, United Arab Emirates. He was a Taurus. He died on November 2nd in 2004 at the age of 86. Willie Sutton was American and a bank robber. During his 40-year criminal career, he stole an estimated $2 million. He spent more than half of his life in prison, but was able to escape three separate times. He was born on June 30th in 1901 in Brooklyn, New York, USA, and was a cancer. He died on November 2nd in 1980 or 9-9. On uh, November 2nd, of course, also 11-11 in the year he died, 1980, 9-9. 11-11, 9-9. He was 79 at the time. Tony Stone, her name, full name, was Marcinia Lyle Alberga. She was American and a baseball player. She made history in 1953 when she was signed by the Indianapolis Clowns of the Negro Leagues, making her the first woman ever to play professionally in a men's league. She was born on July 17th in 1921 in St. Paul, Minnesota, USA, and was a cancer. She died on November 2nd in 1996 at the age of 75. I'm not sure there's been a woman playing in the, Nig not in the well, in the Negro League. Well, I mean, you know, let alone the, um, <laughs> forget the Negro League, the league, period. A, a woman playing men baseball. Now, on smaller scales, of course, well, I'm talking about the professional. Even my own daughter played on a small scale. She was the only female um, and also, of course, Negro or black. Um, in the, um, the league here, the, the, um, oh goodness, the baseball league. Yeah. The, the little league. Oh goodness. I don't know why I couldn't think of the little league. <laughs> she was the only female on a men's a boys team in the little league, um, for years. And then they ultimately one year they switched to, to softball, a girl's team and she didn't like it as much. And then after that year, she stopped playing. Anywho, Ingo Din Diem was Vietnamese and president of South Vietnam, a key figure in the Vietnam War. Diem ruled over South Vietnam from 1955 until 1963. Originally a key ally of the United States, Diem's increasing corruption and persecution of South Vietnam's majority Buddhist population led to his overthrow and assassination in a CIA backed coup in 1963. He was born on January 3rd in 1901, which is 11, 11, 11. And the birthplace was Quang Bin, French Indochina. He was a Capricorn. He died on November 2nd, again, 11, 11 in 1963, which is 19. He was 62 at the time. The cause was assassination. And lastly, for the deaths, George Bernard Shaw was Irish and a playwright, the only person to have been awarded both a Nobel Prize in Literature in 1925 and an Oscar in 1938 for his contributions to literature and for his work on the film Pygmalion. Very nice. Um, an adaptation of his play of the same name respectively also a co-founder of the London School of Economics. All right, that's what's up. Uh, he was born on July 26 in 1856, which is master number 33 for July 26. And 1856 is 9, 11 or 11, of course. He was born in Dublin, Ireland and was a Leo. He died on November 2nd, 1111 in the year 1950. He was 94 at the time. The cause was renal failure precipitated by injuries incurred by falling while pruning a tree. A 94 year old man was up in a tree pruning it and fell and broke his liver and later died. Basically is what they just said. There's a lot of ambulances coming to help him. <laughs> uh, Dave Stockton was American and a golfer or is rather American and a golfer. 
a two-time PGA champion. His two majors, both of which were PGA championships, came in 1970 and 76, and he had 25 professional wins in total. He had the, reputa the reputation of being one of the best putters. He was born on November 2nd, another 11-11, in the year 1941, and is 76 years old. He lives in San, or he was born in San Bernardino, California, USA, a snake on the Chinese Zodiac and a Scorpio. Ken Rosewall, Australian, also a tennis player and eight-time major champion. He won a record 25 tennis majors, including eight Grand Slam singles titles, and is considered to be one of the top male tennis players of all time. He was born on a, a November 2nd, which is still 11-11, in the year 1934. And is 83 years old from Sydney, New South Wales, Australia, a dog on the Chinese Zodiac and a Scorpio. Aga Khan the third, Pakistani and the 48th Shia Imam, one of the founders and the first president of the All India Muslim League. He was born on November 2nd, which again is 1111 in the year 1877 in Karachi, Bombay, presidency. British India, which is now Pakistan, a much shorter name. <laughs> he was a Scorpio. He died on July 11th, 711 or 9, in the year 1957, which is 58 or 13 or 4 or 1111. He was 79 at the time. Warren G. Harding. American and the 29th, another 11, U.S. president. He was a Republican and had been senator from Ohio as well as lieutenant governor of Ohio prior. His presidential term went from March 4, 1924 through August 2, 1923. He was preceded by Woodrow Wilson and succeeded by Calvin Coolidge. He's famous because he was the 29th president of the United States, only in office for two years until his death. Harding is often ranked among the worst presidents. Following his death in 1923, several scandals came to light, primarily the controversy over the Teapot Dome oil reserves and revelations about his extramarital affairs. Well, all of that kind of scandal and whatnot is going on right now. It doesn't have to wait till our Trump is dead. It's, it's now. <laughs> um... He'll definitely be worse if this guy was. He appointed several well-known figures to his cabinet. And in 1922, the major powers agreed on naval limitations at the Washington Conference, a significant post-war achievement. He was born on November 2nd, 1111, in the year 1865, 9-11 or 11, in Blooming Grove, Ohio, USA. He was a Scorpio. James Knox Polk, American and the 11th U.S. president. He was a Democrat, had been governor of Tennessee and speaker of the United States House of Representatives prior. His presidential term went from March 4th in 1845 or 99 through March 4th in 1849, which is 1304, 1111. He was preceded by John Tyler and succeeded by Zachary Taylor. Wait, preceded by John Tyler, succeeded by Zachary Taylor. <laughs> um, he's famous because he served as governor of Tennessee and served as the 11th president of the United States from 1845 to 1849. He was essentially a compromise candidate between the various congressional factions and is considered by historians to be the last strong pre-Civil War president in part because he achieved every domestic and foreign goal set out during his presidential campaign. His presidency was dominated by foreign policy successes. He threatened war with Britain over the issue of which nation owned the Oregon country, then backed away and split the ownership of the region with Britain. When Mexico rejected the American annexation of Texas, Polk led the nation to a sweeping victory in the Mexican-American War, which gave the United States most of its present Southwest. In addition, he agreed the Oregon Treaty with Britain, settling disputes in the Pacific Northwest. In domestic policies, he reduced tariffs and reestablished the independent treasury. Polk pledged not to stand for a second term and died from cholera three months later after his retirement in 1849, which again is 13 of 4, 11, 11. He was born on November 2nd in 1795 in Pineville, North Carolina. I know exactly where it is, USA. He was a Scorpio. 
He died on June 15th, 66 in the year 1849, 11, 11, at the age of 53 of cholera. Lastly, Marie Antoinette, her full name, Maria Antonia Josephina Johanna. She was Austrian and French and queen of France, wife to Louis the 16th and followed him to the guillotine, famous for saying, quote unquote, let them eat cake when told that the peasants had no bread, although the veracity of that is now doubted. She was born on November 2nd, 1111, in the year 1755, and the birthplace was Vienna, Austria. She was a Scorpio. She died on October 16th in 1793 at the age of 37 of decapitation. She was the last. Going to the dice. Ooh, I didn't mean to move that. We're beginning with cocktail. Forget it. And sex. And on this day and to and through the weekend as well, Spirit says, try again. party could be celebrations um we could be trying again just to be more social you know like maybe we previously you know said we'd go out and try to meet some other people or spend time with other people and we didn't do so well so we're being guided to try again and maybe that will begin with some dirty movie or like facetime and stuff online dating perhaps uh, the try again, when I try again, I get email. Going to the cards, I'm beginning with the king of earth, who is generous, professional, responsible, and practical. Actually, the moon may be in Virgo on this day. I believe it is. Entered Leo on the 31st, and I think it was there, the 31st and the 1st, um... So many things happened on this. Oh, that was the, I think the 31st, I was trying to remember everything that had happened and I couldn't. I said Venus, for the video, I said Venus entered Libra, Mercury entered Sagittarius, and I think I couldn't remember the third thing. Leo entered the moon on that same day as well. So um, I believe on the first it left, or in the morning of the second it left, and entered Virgo. So that may be why I'm starting with the King of Earth, who's generous, professional, responsible, and practical. A successful time. Confidently accept opportunities you're offered. You have the Midas touch. And opening to the Five of Fire. Competing goals. Bothered some details. Conflict with others. It had been upside down. So it could be an end of that. And maybe that's why you're money is flowing again and your opportunities are flowing again but sometimes when we have negative energy coming at us or people trying to combat us or actually competing with us at work and stuff um you know that leads to just negative energy just all around and like people don't have to try to you know um um you know put a hex on you or you know work roots on you or something to send you negative energy they can be negative and, and, and it just exudes off of them and gets on you, you know, when we're around these people. And the same thing happens with positive energy. Sometimes we can be uplifted just by being around people who are positive. So anyway, um, um, but I'm, I say all that to say that it appears that some negativity uh, and or competition envy perhaps may have come to an end. And that could be in part what's helping the flow of abundance here and the opportunities as it relates to finances and the material. And balance, this was also upside down. And it's another five. Uh, you got, and it's another red five because balance or temperance in the tarot represents the sign of Sagittarius. So that may have some meaning too because we just saw a red five, the five of wands, upside down. There are no reversals in this deck. That's why I keep turning them right, um, right side up, but it just may mean something. The need for balance and moderation, cooperation and compromise. Wait for perfect timing. So again, maybe somebody was competing with you, um, you know, being combative. Maybe you were being that way with another and 
you don't necessarily need this balance anymore because that has, that has ceased and we've come to some sort of compromise. Maybe um, of those involved in the situation, an earth sign, a Capricorn, Virgo, or Taurus, and um, perhaps on the other side, a Sagittarius involved in the situations. Or maybe it's a, a Sagittarius who, again, was having some sort of um, issues with finances or the material, or it could be that Sagittarius energy and uh, the energy of Jupiter Sagittarius is ruler who that comes in and, uh, you know, helps us to get back to flow as well. And now opening to the chariot upright, see the victory An achievement, an important achievement, no less. I skipped the word important self-discipline and willpower, public recognition. So we could be recognized that the other person is who was foul. Um, not us. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, and now we're in the driver's seat. We are the winners. We are moving forward. We are traveling. Um, we are perhaps buying a car. <laughs> um, a home, right? Moving into a new place with the chariot opposite the king of earth. It could have something to do with, with um, actual material, again, a car or moving or traveling. So it's like purchasing something. Chariot. And lastly, the 10 of earth. Very nice. A very happy family life. Financial security. Finding magic in the little things. So being like appreciative of even the small stuff, counting one's blessings, as they say, uh, and just being happy to be comfortable. I, um, I have a group, I talked about it in my weekly. I said that I was thinking of starting a page or a group or something. I didn't know what, cause it had just come to me like that day that I was supposed to create a space where we could heal together, um, you know, in a more direct way, right? Uh, closer way, closer knit. And so I did it. I created it, as I said I would, to begin November 1st, which is actually today, the day on which I'm doing this reading. Um, I created the group on the 30th or 31st, I don't remember. I think the 31st, Halloween, um, which was yesterday. But it feels like a memory already, as you can see. Um, in any case, um, today, as part of the healing and trimming and cutting the fat, not just the, around our waistlines, but in general, I pose the question, like what words can we stop speaking over ourselves and others, um, you know, that would help us heal. And then I suggested like broke and someone else said can't. Um, another person said, oh, it was a good one. What was it? It just escaped me. But the point I'm making with this 10 of earth is like instead looking at everything from a perspective of I'm blessed, you know, um, like this came up, but I'm blessed, <laughs> you know, and appreciating every little thing, even the small stuff. Another one, woman um, had commented in the group first thing in the morning, like, um, wishing all the members a blessed day. And, um, she said like, uh, goodness and mercy shall follow me. Of course, that's from Psalm uh, 23. And I finished it off with all, you know, amen, all the days of my life. And I put all in capital letters, but it's like having that perspective every single day, all the days of my life, not just some days, goodness and mercy follows me. It follows me all the time. So no matter what comes up, if we remind ourselves that goodness and mercy follows us rather than sinking into the negativity that some other person or situation is posing, we can remain in that 10 of, 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 um, earth energy or quickly draw it back into us. Right. If somebody tries to, some, or some dark energy tries to take it away. And right now that's happening quite a bit. 
you know, and that's going to continue to happen. I saw some people yesterday talking about the veil being thin. I, you guys know I agree. I've been talking about it too for weeks, right? But they were saying as if it was only yesterday. And this is the problem I have with a lot of people and, you know, just humanity in general. Christians do not own God or practices. They don't. There are other reasons why the veil is thin, not just because of Christian beliefs. Um, you know, no more than the Druids own trees or pagans own, you know, the harvest. <laughs> it's just not true. We all have. So into next week, and I'll talk about this in the weekly um, that follows this, of course. Um, into next week, for example, November 7th, we have Diwali. And quite a bit happens on November 7th. It's the new moon in Scorpio. It's Diwali. It is the feast day of um, Mary. Um, like um, Queen of, of Grace or, you know, the, the Matrix of Grace. And um, what else is it? And there's several, several um, celestial things in addition to the new moon, like major transits. I can't think of them all now. I think I did pretty good, though, for something that's happening next week that I just re re recalled those. Um, you know, but we, yeah, they, they were trying to limit the veil being thin to Halloween Day. No, that's that's just the Christian and or pagan um, belief. Sam Hain, you know, attached to that. But that's not in general. Everyone has access to the moon. <laughs> we can all believe in moon activity and all those sorts of things. So. That was my only point. Anyway, I've come to the three of earth. So we're still on this role. Once we combat the negativity, we're still on this role of um, drawing abundance towards us, which again, was, which again was my larger point of why I even started talking. Um, the three of earth is about abundance that we have earned. Now, of course, it can also be about other things, like a party of three, for example, maybe some sort of relationship that began at work, whether it's friendship or romance. Um, or the people with whom you've, you're combating and having conflict, but something going on, um, something involving three. And definitely can be positive um, in terms of abundance that we're bringing in. And having seen the 10 of Earth and as well as the King of Earth, that's primarily what this is going to mean, right, for most. Overall energy is the Emperor with Archangel Michael. Organization and logic, structure and discipline. So it can have something to do with organization. Um, this can also be somebody's boss. Again, we've seen a lot of evidence that something may be going on with work, maybe even promotion, raise, increase, having beat out somebody else for a position or something. Um, this can also be coming into contact somehow with some sort of authority. So maybe that we're getting the money through a court settlement or something. This can also be attached to one's father. As a matter of fact, the emperor came up um, in a reading I did that where I think the 10 of earth also came up. The three of earth may have come up too. I'm not sure about that one. I know the three of swords did. And it was the general reading, not this week, but the week prior, and I talked about someone, someone possibly having to talk to their siblings about putting their father, um, or perhaps mother, I think I said mother too, possibly, um, but I, I did a lot of talking about the father because the emperor was there. Father in, I said, a nursing home or something. Um, so we do have a client, uh, client. we do have, um, a member, a sister among us who is going through that. And that could be another reason why this emperor is showing up, at least for her. Um, she is having to talk to her siblings about putting their father in hospice, which typically seems to be the last place um, that, we're, that we're sent, you know, like our, to rest and relax, you know, and have, comfort to the extent that we're able um, 
through our suffering with whatever we were conditioned we, we have, you know, our last days. So I did ask also that people pray for that family on my Facebook. All right. Um, let's see what else is going on. Hmm. I started to put one back when I felt the two, but let me just take it. So the heart of the matter has two. Hmm. Okay. This piece of carnelian just jumped off the table. Uh. What's what's coincidental there is that. Today in my Facebook memories, and I don't even always look at the Facebook memories, but I did today. To, on this day, I think the year 2015, I had shared a page from my book about gemstones. Um, and it was the page on red carnelian, which carnelian just fell. This is blood of Isis, but it's, a, it's carnelian. Um, but it's specifically gem quality carnelian that's found only in the Red Sea. So this was the page I had shared, a page about blood of Isis. But carnelian just fell off the table. All right, I'm going to move on. Crowning the masculine on this day, the night of water, emotional, romantic, enthusiastic, and, and contemplative. Falling in love or wedding proposals. The need to balance emotions and an invitation to a social event. The Knight of Water is a Pisces, Scorpio, or Cancer, or someone likened to those traits or at attributes, or just wanting to make some sort of proposal that will bring us emotional joy, happiness, and them too. And often with the Knight of Water, it's somebody that we know already. So it can be like an ex or something. Surrounded by the Dreamer with Archangel Metatron, Major Arcana card zero. Tends to represent for me, at least in this deck in particular, the signs of Gemini and Virgo. Again, where I believe the moon is. A leap of faith. Follow your dreams, at least to unexpected opportunities. So a brand new path. So this masculine may be looking to have a, or start a brand new relationship or take the relationship in a new place a path that we never walked or something else that's going to make him walk a, a new path, but something else that's going to make him emo emotionally fulfilled that may involve some sort of proposal. So let's say it's a job offer because we saw that all those pentacles. Um, it's a job with which he is in love <laughs> uh, or would, you know, could definitely see himself falling in love. And he's ready to take that new path. Again, this um, emperor could be you know, the boss there or something who's making the proposal, give, offering him the job. The emperor, by the way, I don't think I mentioned it, um, represents the planet Mars, ruler of Scorpio um, and Aries. When I picked this up also up right behind it, ooh, interesting, is a two or an 11. We had a lot of 11s pop up on this day. The high priestess, which for me is a Gemini, not just for me, she's a Gemini, period, in you know the actual one, um, but can also be a water sign in, this, in tarot practice. Listen to your intuition, have patience, and consider carefully what you want before acting. High Priestess, very good at that. She's super observant, very smart, um, analytical. You know, she takes in all the information and weighs it carefully before making a move. Also upright behind that major arcana card, Justice. So it's not an 11, but it's got like a big 11 on it. Fair and just decisions. Do what you know is right. Stand up for your beliefs. Major Arcana card justice represents the planet Venus and the sign of Libra, which it rules where she is currently located. Retrograde. The next card is the five of earth, but it is upside down. So again, that we could be moving away from broke uh, and lack and fear of lack. And fear, period. Maybe fear of relationships. We're ready to walk a path and to be with somebody. Um, you know, that fear of commitment, fear of abandonment. So, like, I, why should I even get involved with somebody? Because it might not work. All that it looks like it could very well be gone. And the masculine subconscious, the nine of fire. Don't give up. Protect that which you've created. 
have courage and believe in yourself. So again, general reading could be a job, could be a relationship, could be just the new him. Here's the feminine coming through with a very single type energy or uh, if she is coupled, one of value, deservingness, worthiness, and worth. Enjoying life's little luxuries, spending quiet time alone, successful self-employment. She is, um, yeah, spending time with her, getting to know and like and love herself a little bit better. She is surrounded by the aid of fire, events moving at a fast pace. Delays are over. Many things are happening at once. Aid of fire can also be about communication, perhaps connected to email and trying again, like the dice suggested. Um, can also be about, um, it's about movement, wands in general about movement. And it can also be about things going on behind the scenes that will set her up for, you know, a nice situation. We also have a nine mirroring a nine. Nines also came up quite a bit in today's history, um, as did earth versus fire. So this is interesting too. Um, feminine subconscious. Very nice. The two of water, a relationship that continues to grow closer. Forgiveness and the positive resolution of a conflict. So here we have this water mirroring water and two cards that go very well. One that wants to make proposals and one that's about partnership. So it's also another 11, essentially. Crowning, another one. <laughs> renewal, major arcana card, renewal or judgment in the traditional tarot, which represents the sign of um, Scorpio and its ruler, Pluto, for me. Now, this may be connected to November 2nd, specifically. Again, this is a general reading, um, but I, I mentioned at the big start of it that today is All Souls Day. What All Souls Day is about is praying for those who are believed to be in limbo, stuck in purgatory. That's what the judgment card is all about. Especially if you look at the one from the right away, anybody that has one and wants to Google it, right, to look at it. It is a card with Archangel Gabriel. It looks like Archangel Gabriel, to me at least, because of the horn that he's blowing. And that's, that's Archangel Gabriel's job. Uh, in the book of Revelations, right? He blows the horn. Um, it's all these gray colored people. So that gives the impression to me that they're dead. These are dead bodies. And they're sort of looking up to the sky, to, you know, to the clouds. I think they're on a cloud too, but they're looking up to a cloud above them into Archangel Gabriel. And they're waiting for judgment. They're waiting to be told, okay, you go to heaven now, you go to hell, hell now. That's what this day is about for Christians, uh, many Christians, particularly Catholics. And um, we are to pray for those souls that are trapped in hopes that they can be accepted uh, into the gates of heaven. And if you, those of you who saw the love reading, I think it was, uh, you saw that I talked about the gate, the gate at the top of the hill top of the mountain because I was talking about Teddy Pendergrass and that's what Pendergrass means right the gate at the top of the mountain which I figured to I to me I saw as heaven um in that reading so that could be very well be why, why this is showing up here but um in addition to that it's showing up here next to the knight of water who again may very well be a Scorpio especially since the overall energy is also the emperor which represents Mars one of Scorpio's rulers and um could be about a Scorpio and a Gemini or a Scorpio and a Virgo. You know, sp specific. They could be a specific message for those. At the root. Wow. The six of water. Memories from your history or childhood. Issues regarding children. Romanticizing the past. So as I said about the night of water, how it can be like a past love, an ex or something, some or somebody that's around you that you already know, that you're, you know, to whom you're already close, um, who's making this proposal or who you might end up with in a romantic way. Six of water definitely set, means that as well. Um, you know, returned exes, 
soulmate relationships also. Yes, this is a general reading. Again, it can be about children too. Um, maybe the birth of a child, a new start with a child. It's making him emotionally happy. Keep pushing forward. You're a dad now, right? That could definitely be the case. That brings the relationship closer together. This thing that they've created, being that they've created, protect that which you've created. So it could be about the masculine um, having had a child also, but it can definitely be about a soulmate relationship coming back together. Um, perhaps reunion if it had been in separation. At the heart of the matter, we got, oh, it was three, not just two. Whoa. Whoa. This is like a, hitting the jackpot. It's the 10 of earth, a very happy family life, financial security, finding magic in the little things in life. This is about, again, feeling secure, feeling at ease, thankful, counting your blessings, just acknowledging the fact that goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And for the feminine, it's a very beautiful progression from the nine to the 10, right? She just continues to be abundant and to grow. Judgment also, as it relates to finances, career, the material, like the three of earth is about abundance that is earned. No one's doing you a favor when this abundance is coming to you. You put in the work, the karma, right? The prayers to get out of purgatory, right? The purgatory that we're in here, you was going through some sort of struggle in limbo, you know, not quite, um, well enough off, but not quite, you know, down and out either, somewhere in the middle, floundering. And, you know, you put in those work and you put in those prayers. Maybe somebody put in those prayers for you. Uh, even generationally, your family, your grandmother could have been praying for you before a future date. And that date is now all those sorts of things. Um, so yeah, it's increase, it's abundance, perhaps through some sort of partnership, it could be a business partnership, things that went on behind the scenes, the universe stepped in to help, but also the ace of water falling in love or the resurgence of a relationship, spiritual growth and enhanced intuition, maybe even a new home. So talked about a new home, talked about moving perhaps, um, for some people that could be what's going on. Talked about the birth of a child. Maybe that can be the ace of water. Brand new start with a baby. As a matter of fact, one of my clients did just have a baby. Um, <laughs> she just had a baby today, as a matter of fact, um, and posted it on Facebook. One of my original clients, actually, original clients and, you know, subscribers, viewers, supporters, Facebook friend. Um, there may be others. <laughs> yeah, so there's that. There's still a new home sitting here atop the 10 of earth or some, some sort of, again, thing that you've earned, you've come into, or it's earnings from somewhere else, from a family member, it's generational again, and somebody's leaving you this, or you've inherited it, something like that is possible. And this is relationships that had been in separation too, reconciliation, somebody returning, especially sitting here atop the six of water. Boom. That's not it though. First of all, let me show you this little tic-tac-toe thing. The Knight of Water, the Ace of Water, the Two of Water. How beautiful is that for in the area of love? <sighs> Being crossed also by judgment, which as it relates to relationships is about the need to, you know, come to a crossroad and decide where do we go from here, if anywhere. Like I said, for some people, it's the end of the road, but it looks like the, this couple is going forward. You know, they're getting back together. They're going on. But again, like I said, that's not it. The third card is the chariot. Major Arcana card, the chariot, the ultimate card of victory in the tarot, at least to me, ahead of the ace of swords and everything. The six of wands, the ultimate card of victory. Also again, about moving, new home, new job, baby, <laughs> especially where there had been a struggle. 
difficulty being pregnant before, victory, the driver's seat, in control of your own life, making your own decisions, deciding consciously to go on the new path, try something new, try something different, new car, new home, new job, an important achievement, self-discipline and willpower. It's likely what got us here. And it is creating an opportunity for public recognition. Other people noticing that you succeeded or other people are aware. Boom. We don't need no stinking clarifications today. <laughs> Further advice to the masculine. Okay, here's another indication that again, a baby may be involved or a fresh start may be involved and abundance certainly is. It's abundance that may be in the form of a bundle, you know, or not. It could go either way. Lavish abundance. Give birth to your dreams. Boom, right? The dreamer is what the fool is called in this deck. The brand new path is referred to as the dreamer. Give birth to your dreams. So don't have any lack of any fear that was holding you back from walking a new path masculine. Also nurture yourself and others, particularly your new baby if you have one or, or and its mother. <laughs> and for us feminine, boom, we just keep progressing onward and upward in the area of finance and the material. It's the queen of earth. Thoughtful, creative, warm, and sensible. Make time for those around you. Trust, take rather, a sensible approach. Deal with challenges in a kind and understanding manner. The Queen of Earth is representative of finances, career, material. She is a Virgo, Taurus, or Capricorn, or someone likened to those traits or attributes and is possibly a facilitator, could be our own energy, or of this abundance coming into our lives. But one way or another, the abundance is ours for the having. I hope that you guys have enjoyed the reading and you find it helpful in your life. Namaste, angels.